The first thing I want to talk about is picking up from the previous video where we were talking about setting up our guides and setting up our image area on our canvas for our projects. And typically we are going to have some kind of a background image, uh, whether it's just a solid color or a gradient, whatever, that doesn't matter. And then we will have this two-point border. I made it a little bit thicker just so we could see it easily. A two-point border going around <clears throat> the edge of the image area because it gives it a nice crisp clean edge. And um, as we um, uh, typically are creating pieces, parts for our projects, um, often along the edges we're going to have ragged or uneven lines from different shapes and pieces. And we can set this up where we use the stroke, this black, in this case black, stroke, um, it, to put it in front of those ragged edges and cover them up, thereby hiding them and giving it a nice, crisp, clean black line edge like we have here. <clears throat> and the way we want to do that is this. First off, um, what I'm going to do is duplicate. Well, first off, what I want to do is I want to call this uh, the background. So I'll double click it and we'll call it background. And uh, I always have my own little convention for this. So there's my background layer. And in this case, I'm going to take the stroke off of that. Okay? And um, there's my yellow background image. And then I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to duplicate it. Okay? And the one up top or in front, I'm going to call it my border. <clears throat> because, in fact, what it is going to be is the shape that I use for my black line or two-point stroke. And um, what I'll do here is take the fill out of it, okay, and then for the stroke, it can be any color, but I'll give it black, and you see the one in front, up top, is called the border. The one below is just the fill. And the idea is that you create these as two separate layers. <clears throat> you lock them so they can't move and be messed with. And as you build your canvas and create your project, you put all the other layers in between these. And, as, and then what will happen is in the end, this black border, which is in front, you make sure it's on top or in front, will cover up those ragged edges and it gives it a nice crisp clean frame. And that's what I strongly suggest you do um, with uh, setting that up. Okay, <clears throat> let's see now. The next thing we want to talk about is a very um, powerful group of filters that um, Illustrator has um, called the uh, Pathfinder filters. And quite often when we are creating um, something, it is easier to uh, create complex shapes by combining simpler shapes or, as I'm going to show you, actually subtracting uh, one shape from another. I was recently doing some architectural work, uh, doing just some layout uh, things, um, and we were putting out the pieces of furniture. In this case, this is kind of the standard symbol for a commode. And, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to create this and, um, and use this image. Well, um, the idea here was that I could um, I could have sat here, okay, and I could have manually tried to create that shape 
and I could have, I'm sure, done an okay job of it, but, you know, manually trying to create this shape and then, you know, do it and get it right and then try to fine tune it, etc., etc. Well, clearly you can see that that would take time and effort. And yet, look how quick and easy, of course, in seconds, I can precisely create this, um, this uh, oval. Okay. One shape. And then I can quickly create, of course, the rectangle, um, the other shape. Okay. And then all I need to do is go up under Window, and we'll bring up the Pathfinder. Window Pathfinder <clears throat> palette, and here is the deal. By com using the Pathfinders, in this case, the very first one, and it tells us what it does. It adds shapes together, okay? And so, all I needed to do was these two uh, shapes, select both of them, click the Pathfinder, and wherever it, whenever it lights up, this little button called the Expand button, you click it if it lights up like it just did, and suddenly, in seconds, I have um, one shape, and it's now a combined shape that I can color quickly and easily. Um, another uh, kind of uh, use of the Pathfinders and one of the other Pathfinders. Um, I was doing some work um, and created these shapes that were almost like parts of a culvert or a bridge. <clears throat> and I wanted a shape that looked like, let's see, like this. I wanted a shape that looked like this. Now again, um, okay, once again I could have done uh, the other way of trying to manually uh, draw this. Okay, and then do it here, and then try to do this, and then do this, and then come out here and do it, and you know, uh, once again try to create it and then sit here and fine-tune it. Doesn't make any sense. When, once again, what I have here is the Pathfinders, and in this case, I'm going to remove the red circle shape from the orange shape. So once again, it only takes seconds to do the circle, it only takes seconds to do the rectangle, I merely need to put the circle where it needs to be, select both shapes, and in this case, I go to the next Pathfinder, filter right here and click it, it removes the shape in front. So I click it, again hit the expand button right here, and voila, there's my shape. Okay? And um, uh, one of the other Pathfinder filters that um, I'll show you, select both shapes, and here is one that uh, break divides an object. So I'll hit that one. Okay. Let me see. Make sure we got that. Okay. We'll get both shapes. We'll hit the Pathfinder. And now I'll go back. I'll deselect it and look at what I have. Um, I've got a variety. I've got this piece. I've got this piece, and of course I have that piece. So um, this is a very, very useful, uh, terrific tool. Um, one other quick thing, and that is transparency. Um, here we can take, I'm just going to overlap these couple of images, and we can select an image, again go Window, drop down to Transparency, and bring that up and um, simply go in and hit the slider right there and you can see 
what starts to happen. We can literally create surfaces that almost look like they are glass, where you can see one thing inside of another thing or through something. And there's also a group of filters here, right here, under normal. You've got a group of filters that are very, very powerful that can also add some pretty interesting effects. And you can see how it changes the interaction of the pixels between these two objects. And so um, you just have to try them out and, uh, and see what kinds of effects you can get. But you can clearly um, get some really neat things happening there.